So I went on a short three day business trip to the beautiful city of Hangzhou back in July of this year and only got round to uploading this now. It's only a 45 minute direct high speed train journey from Shanghai. This just goes to show how populated cities are here even though they're only a short distance away from each other. Aside from the historic theme and the beautiful landscape, it's also a budding tech city with a lot of investment in the field. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that essentially translates to Paradise above, Suzhou and Hangzhou below, which basically means heaven on earth. And even Marco Polo in his travels described Hangzhou as the most splendid heavenly city in the world. Not sure if he had travelled the world by then, but definitely a great compliment. Hangzhou is known for its ancient proverbs and stories of romance. One of the best known is the legend of the white snake, a fairy tale about a snake spirit who falls in love with a human named Xu Xuan, a good natured boy from Hangzhou and the ensuing chaos that follows. It's one of the four classic folk tales, written works that have literary significance and has since been presented in a number of major Chinese operas, films and TV series. When I arrived in Hangzhou, the first thing I noticed was how similar it is to Shanghai, but the biggest difference was the air quality. Because the city has mountains and a lot of natural landscape within the city itself, the air quality felt much nicer. We initially planned to stay at an Airbnb and we did for the first night with this amazing view over the city. However, we decided to move to a hotel for the rest of the trip as it didn't quite live up to what was advertised online. The Shangri-La Hotel was in a pretty awesome location just overlooking the West Lake. It had these nice ornaments with living plants and fauna growing on them. I also got a crash course in Chinese calligraphy, but apparently I was writing too fast. Maybe I was just trying to impress because I used to like writing with calligraphy pens back in secondary school. Hangzhou is most well known for its West Lake, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The West Lake has influenced Chinese poets and painters for its natural beauty and historic relics such as its temples and pagodas. There's a certain calm and rejuvenating aura about it with a mystical vibe. Wasn't sure if it was just me. But anyway, the lake itself is significant as it's described as having influenced garden design in the rest of China as well as Japan and Korea over the centuries. Hangzhou is also where Alibaba is headquartered and one of its notable residents is the man himself, Jack Ma. The most prominent eras in Hangzhou's development history, the Wu Yu Kingdom and its southern Song Dynasty had great impacts on the West Lake. The Wu Yu Kingdom made Hangzhou its capital and its rulers paid great tribute to Buddhism and built a number of temples, pagodas and shrines around the lake area. At the beginning of the Ming Dynasty in 1369, people blamed the collapse of the previous Southern Song Dynasty to the West Lake because the upper class and empress indulged themselves into the melody and wine with the sceneries of the lake. So the people and the governors didn't want to make it clean and thriving in case that this would happen again. And fast forward to the Qing Dynasty from 1644 to 1912, the Kangxi Emperor visited Hangzhou five times and wrote the names of 10 scenic spots of West Lake selected in the Southern Song Dynasty. The local governor then inscribed the Emperor's handwriting onto stelae and built pavilions over them. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, Hangzhou was among the first places open to tourism. The city government preserved the mountain area around the lake and planted a large number of trees and renovated many of the ancient temples. The Lingyin Temple. It's a Buddhist temple and commonly literally translated as Temple of the Soul's Rest. It's one of the largest and wealthiest Buddhist temples in China. The monastery was founded during the Eastern Jing Dynasty 
by an Indian monk named Huili in Chinese and inhabited by more than 3,000 monks. The largest stone pagoda is located near the entrance called Elder Li's Pagoda. It houses the ashes of Huili. The temple is nestled within the mountains and just the walk to the temple itself felt like a scene from Tomb Raider. Buddhist statues housed within rocks and caves, shrines and pagodas covered in overgrown fauna and bridges with flowing water underneath. A truly magical experience that awakens your senses and imagination. Plus it was raining heavily on the day and this to me made the experience all the better. I have to say, walking along the West Lake at night is so tranquil and serene. There are many traditional Chinese markets and services along the lake, such as this ear cleaning service which I was goaded into trying. It felt like a fly was stuck in my ear the whole time, but it was slightly uncomfortable, but my eardrum was intact by the end of it. It was a short but immersive experience exploring this idyllic city and it's a shame we didn't have more time but I'll definitely be coming back here, that's for sure, especially given how close it is to Shanghai. I'm risking my camera for this footage. <laughs> it better be please, good. It's okay, there's no water drop inside. Though. Sorry for the bad footage, it's because of the rain. Don't kill me. <laughs> with, with the shangri -La logo. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, then please give it a like and leave a comment and do subscribe to get notified of future videos if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys.